Welcome back. Federal prosecutors are shifting gears in the corruption trial against former Chicago alderman Ed Burke. They're now focusing on allegations that Burke traded political favors for business with his law firm involving a local Burger King franchisee. That franchisee, Shokat Danani, was on the stand for more than four hours yesterday. The company says they felt threatened by Burke's team. Burke's lawyers pointed out that the franchisee initiated their relationship, not Burke, and that there was never a demand that the law firm be hired. So here to talk about the latest in the Burke trial, Tribune investigative reporter Ray Long. Mr. Long, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, good to be here, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. So we finally heard directly from the owner of that infamous Burger King at the heart of this trial. As someone who's been on the Burke beat for years now, what surprised you about that testimony and what picture did it paint for the jury? Well, what was probably the most telling was how he was just matter of fact about how this went down. Uh, he even testified at one point that, yeah, he gave uh, his uh, tax business, or at least he presented it to Burke, uh, because he thought it would help him clear the path to get remodeling done and get the permits going that he needed to do basic remodeling at his Burger King. This is the one uh, out there on uh, South Pulaski in his ward. And it was interesting, too, I think, that he spoke about sort of that gut instinct that he had. Can you tell us about th that moment in court? Right. He, he was just very, very um, as I said, ma matter of fact, but he was also very deliberate in what he was saying. He answered uh, straight up. He answered uh, just to the point, and he gave uh, the prosecutors what they wanted. So let's move now to the testimony of the former director at the Field Museum. Now, she said that she called Mr. Burke about a proposal to increase fees, but she definitely got more than she bargained for from the former alderman. So what exactly did prosecutors lay out, and how did Burke's attorneys try to counter that? Well, it was real interesting because they had uh, tapes of a phone call that Burke had with Deborah Beckin, who was a director of governmental affairs there at the Field Museum and dealt with politicians and, and foreign governments, even some of their officials. But she called him up just to give him a heads up and try to uh, get his imprimatur, if you will, to, uh, for a proposed increase in the admission fee at the uh, Field Museum. And when she got on the line, she was met with a very stern voice and a very aggravated Ed Burke who said, hey, I was surprised to hear from you. I'm disappointed because I didn't ever hear from you when I recommended uh, a, an internship, a paid internship for the daughter of, of Burke's former uh, city hall council buddy, Terry Gabinski. And she uh, said that she felt threatened, and uh, she immediately sent out a uh, email to the top brass at the museum and said, "We've got a problem." Now, as you asked about the the defense team, they drew a much different picture. They were uh, just suggesting that he that he Burke was, uh, you know, doing what all aldermen do. He was in a bad mood on that day that he was talking to. So Beckin and uh, that uh, uh, the Burger King uh, franchise owner uh, approached Burke first. Hmm. Oh, well, looking ahead, prosecutors still need to address the old Chicago Post Office deal and accepting bribes for his law firm to help the liquor store out. But there's a courtroom moment that has gone viral regarding the judge's comfort dog. Uh, this is something that there's no laughing matter in this trial, but this might have been an eyebrow raising um, moment, to say the least. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Yeah, it was certainly a moment of levity. Uh, <laughs> we were right in the middle of some serious uh, testimony, and all of a sudden one of the defendants uh, said, uh, Judge, uh, <laughs> and uh, next thing we know, uh, the judge is looking over at her dog, who had uh, really uh, trained to been telling to tell her that uh, she had some business to do. Birdie the dog uh, was uh, 
in need of some relief. Okay. And uh, uh, her business was a matter of uh, court importance at that moment. <laughs> so they broke the trial. And uh, Bertie, it, it seems that uh, the judge has found out and ruled that uh, it wasn't the bad intentions of a juror, <laughs> but this uh, one particular juror had overfed too many treats to poor Birdie. Oh my gosh, to poor little Birdie. Okay, well, like you said, a moment of levity in an otherwise um, not humorous uh, trial for sure. It, do you see that um, and the holidays, just the, the break that is now happening as any kind of distraction? I don't know who that would play in favor of, if anyone. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. No. Yeah, I think that's a tough, tough tell. Um, uh, clearly, the defense is going to try to come back on an upswing here because we're having a shortened court session today. They're going to end around noon or 1230. The judge is going to let everybody go home to get ready for Thanksgiving. Um, but it's hard to tell. Uh, yesterday, though, so everybody knows, Bertie was home resting comfortably. <laughs> Ray Long, thank you so much for joining us, providing the insight that we need, sort of the, the full recap and update on this case so far, including the one humorous moment. A Ray Long, investigative reporter for the Chicago Tribune, thank you so much for joining us and happy Thanksgiving. Good to be here. Thank you, Jackie. Absolutely.